everyone. Welcome back. Tidbits episode 8 today. I'm Christina Koopman. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk about what defines success as an artist. If I were to ask you, what does it look like when someone has made it in the art world? What would that mean? Does that mean someone who makes a lot of money selling their artwork? Probably. Does it mean someone who has gallery or museum shows all over the world? How about someone whose art is recognizable on site? Yes, that's a Van Gogh painting. Probably all of those things, or at least a couple of them, right? What about if your work is protested? Specifically, what if 200 protesters show up outside of a public library to protest a show that you're a part of? By almost any metric out there, Kara Walker is one of the most successful artists of the last century. Her work has been exhibited at uh, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Guggenheim in New York, the Whitney. Um, she was a 1997 recipient of the MacArthur Fellowship, and I believe she was the second youngest person ever to be awarded at 24 years of age. However, her work is not for everyone. Walker has described the overwhelming subject matter of her work as a, quote, too muchness. Her commentaries on racism, social justice, and explicit themes have rocked the art world's boat more than once, and they continue to do so today. Let's take a closer look at this. Walker is best known for exploring the raw intersection of race, gender, violence, and sexuality through her iconic silhouetted figures. Walker unleashes the traditionally proper Victorian medium of the silhouette directly onto the walls of a gallery, creating a theatrical space in which her unruly cut paper characters come alive. Silhouettes began as a courtly art form in 16th century Europe and became a suitable hobby for ladies and an economical alternative to painted miniatures. Traditionally, silhouettes were made of the sitter's bust profile, cut into paper, affixed to a non-black background, and framed. Except for the outline of a forehead, nose, lips, and chin, all the subject's facial details are lost in a silhouette, thus reducing the sitter to a few personal characteristics. In Walker's hands, the minimalist silhouette becomes a tool for exploring racial identification. All things being equal, what distinguishes the white master from his slave? Walker forces the viewer to confront the visual cues that make up stereotypes. These cues distill human forms into basic and arbitrary shapes that compose the basis of racial discrimination. The historical setting for much of Walker's work is the American pre-Civil War antebellum South. While this is the backdrop for many of her scenes, Walker does not represent a necessarily truthful depiction of history. Fact, fiction, and fantasy are intertwined. Exaggerated truths and fictionalized events parade as history lessons that viewers must unpack, sort out, and ultimately decide which elements are true. Through this scrambling of truth, the artist is also commenting on the way that official history, particularly that of African Americans, is just as constructed as her stories are. This piece, titled Gone, an historical romance of a civic war as it occurred between the dusky thighs of one young negress and her heart, would become her signature style. The work's epic title refers to numerous sources, including Gone with the Wind, set during the Civil War, and a passage in Thomas Dixon Jr.'s The Klansman, devoted to the manipulative power of the tawny negress. The form of the tableau, with its silhouetted figures in 19th century costume leaning toward one another beneath the moon, alludes to a storybook romance. The tableau fails to deliver on this promise when we notice the graphic depictions of sex and violence that appear on closer inspection. Some African-American artists, particularly those who participated in the civil rights movement, deplored her use of racist caricatures. Walker made it clear that her intent as an artist was not to create pleasing images or to raise questions with easy answers. She also explained her use of the silhouette by stating that, The silhouette says a lot with very little information, which is the same thing a stereotype does. In later works like this one, titled Darky Town Rebellion, 
The artist uses overhead projectors to throw colored light onto the ceiling, walls, and floor of the exhibition space. The lights cast a shadow of the viewer's body onto the walls, where it mingles with Walker's black paper figures and landscapes. With one foot in the historical realism of slavery and the other in the fantastical space of a romance novel, Walker's fiction simultaneously seduce and implicate the audience. Our shadows mingle with the silhouettes of her fictitious stereotypes, inviting us to compare the two and challenging us to decide where our own lives fit in the progression of history. Even 20 years later, Walker's work receives mixed reviews. Some critics find it brave, while others find it offensive. Her work is by no means universally appreciated. But in retrospect, it's easy to see that her intention has always been to advance the conversation about race, a conversation which we still need to have today. <laughs>